Hi, my name is Glenn Smith from Fragile Dagile. Welcome to the second in our series on the anatomy of a digitally transformed organization. Uh, if you haven't watched it already, it's kind of assumed you've seen the overview or the first episode of this where we went through high level all of the major components of a digitally transformed organization in the classes. And um, this one's going to be going through in a bit more detail on the very first of those, which is the fact that it's a layered architecture. So what do we mean by a layered architecture? Well, there's good and bad layered architecture. The traditional approach, which has been called application-centric, which is probably prevalent until 10 years ago, and in many organizations still the prevalent approach, really is what you might call a vertically integrated uh, architecture. Now, while vertical integration is good in a market sense, or at least good for some companies like Apple, in an architecture sense, we would argue it's a very bad approach. Effectively, this is that you buy targeted solutions. We'll go and we'll get a customer relationship management solution that includes all of the processes, the UI, the data, the functionality, the business rules that are required for how we manage our customers. And then we'll do another one for our product management systems. Say in banking, you might have a core banking platform or in manufacturing, a PLM or product lifecycle management system. And on, so you, you know, add in your HR, your finance, etc., and you just end up with these uh, vertically layered solutions that are tightly integrated within themselves, so they've got all the functionality that they need to do it, um, all hardwired in together. There's some real problems with this architecture, apart from its general lack of agility uh, and inherent fragility, we would argue. The first is it's incredibly difficult to support omni-channel and multi-channel experiences because the channels for each are embedded into the solutions that you buy. Um, Probably one of the most insidious things is that you get process fragmentation. So the full end-to-end -end business process, again, I'll use a bank like originating a mortgage, little bits of the process end up sitting in multiple solutions. So you don't have end-to-end -end visibility. Um, and as a matter of well-known, understood from data analytics, that where these processes break down is almost invariably as the handoff points across the different solutions. Because you've got no visibility that the next person actually picks that up. Um, supporting new channels, just to finish this point, and, and we would argue that actually most of the, a lot of innovation, certainly maybe not most, but a significant part of the innovation that's happening at the moment is in the channel space. AR, VR, perhaps a little bit out, more out in the future, but certainly the next couple of years, voice, you know, Google Home, um, Alexa, these type of things. And supporting these new channels as they come on stream is extremely difficult in this architecture because you have to rely on the vendors of each one of those solutions to come on and support it. But even if they do, you end up with a fragmented uh, digital experience for your customers spread across multiple solutions. Um, so inherently, this vertical integrated architecture is a major problem. Um, for organizations, and certainly we would argue that if you still remain entirely vertically layered and integrated, you are not um, uh, a digitally transformed organization. That might seem bad, but it's actually worse, because in that prior diagram, we had a nice neat layering, which every solution kind of has all neatly, and if you added together the sum of all of those solutions, they would fit perfectly and, and fit all of the things you need in your organization. The reality is that's not what happens. They have duplicated functionality that overlap each other. They've got different parts of, of the same process with different overlaps. Each organization or vendor you buy the solutions from has a slightly different view of the process. So you end up having all of these um, patches that you have to build around to hold it together. In this worst case, you get what we call islands of data, where you have data uh, replicated and, uh, across all those systems. Perhaps in its, the most common occurrence of that is customer, because every one of these solutions, certainly the customer-facing ones, are going to want to own the customer data. So you end up having customer data in all of these individual solutions. The net result of this is, even if you are using an ESB or API management or sort of the more modern integration technologies, conceptually or logically, you build a point-to-point -point architecture. Because to get these solutions to actually talk to each other, you end up having to build interfaces dedicated for system A to talk to system B, et cetera. At its worst case scenario, and to, to its fullest, longest uh, uh, con uh, logical conclusion, you end up with an architecture like this, what's typically referred to in America as a fur-balled architecture, in Australia we call it spaghetti architecture. Um, and you can see how bad it looks. In fact, in this particular organization, half the time when they made changes, they kind of closed their eyes and hoped to God that everything would work because they really couldn't even understand the impacts across it. So, oh, well, what does that matter? Okay, it's a complex uh, uh, diagram and it's really complicated architecture. Well, it matters a lot. This organization, at the time this picture was taken in 1999, and this is a genuine architecture picture from this organization, was one of the largest uh, retailers in the world and certainly one of the, lar the largest in the U.S. at the time. Um, electronics retailer, not general food. Um, 
Within the space of five years, they'd gone from market leader to Chapter 11 bankruptcy, largely because they couldn't react to change. And in this particular case, it was the drive of the dot-com boom and the online retailing that came along that they couldn't react to. So this is not a theoretical argument. This really is important to your survival as an agile organization, is not to end up in architecture like that. So what does the architecture look like for a truly digitally transformed or agile organization? Well, we briefly covered this in the overview, but in a bit more detail, it is layered horizontally. And that's a fundamental difference. That there are arguably more, but for the purposes of this overview, five separate layers that must be layered out horizontally and kept loosely coupled from each other with clear rules about what logic goes in which layer. So if your channels are kept separate from your processes, which are kept separate from the integration layer, and fundamentally kept separate from your individual service providers, which provide the real business logic and data to this overall architecture. And critically, identity and access management is kept separate and, and uh, um, loosely coupled from all of the rest. In this architecture, supporting new channels becomes relatively simple because your business process logic, your integration logic, your services are already kept separate from the channels. So to support a new channel simply means adding the logic required to support the user interaction on that channel. Your true business logic and your data are shared. Equally, omni-channel is not an issue because shifting channels is, is easy in this, well, relatively easy in this architecture because all the business logic is not stored in the channels itself. Um, so ultimately, the end game in this, and it is, of course, in our name, Fragile to Agile, um, and what we believe any true digital transformation should be aiming towards is to give you agility. Now, you might have seen if you're observing the bullet point at the top of the vertical uh, layering slide saying how short-term gain, long-term uh, pain and fragility. Um, yes, there is some advantages to the application-centric approach. Oh, I just point solution, quickly go out and buy a solution, fix that problem. That might give you some short-term gain, but in the long term, you end up in the spaghetti architecture that I showed you that ultimately means the organization went bust. Um, you know, in the horizontal architecture, yes, it's harder to deliver. So there is some short-term pain getting there, but it really pays off with the long-term gain of agility. And let's not forget from our overview slide what we mean by agility. It's not just agility in the traditional English version of the word, but also includes adaptability and flexibility. And I'll finish on this point because it's absolutely critical. Adaptability, we would argue today, is probably the most important feature of an organization. As Charles Darwin correctly said, as opposed to it's awfully misquoted as survival of the strongest or survival of the fittest, it's not. It's the most adaptable of species that survives. And we would argue in this world where change is the new black, as they say, your ability to adapt to changing market conditions is probably the one of the most important features you should have in your organization. Hope you enjoyed that. Keep an eye out for all of the other episodes. We'll be covering all of the other critical layers in the digital transformed organization. Thank you for your time.